What is up, Nutsacks? JJ back here from Rump Your Bets with another free pick for you. This time it's going to be a Major League Baseball for Tuesday, June the 8th. Game's going to be played between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Going for the Pirates is JT Brubaker, and for the Dodgers is Walker Bueller. Current betting spread is Dodgers, minus 195. Total, 7.5. All right, so it's nice to um, keep some momentum rolling. Uh, two solo play winners last week. Last one being the Orioles, plus 102. Moves these solo vids to 14 and 6 plus 8. Point. She almost fucking threw up saying it. Plus 8.7 units. Um, I went 2 and 1 on the live show Saturday, clearing over a unit uh, with the dog, or one of the dogs, and uh, then 1 and 2 on Sunday's live show, losing a little over a unit. Uh, but Holder picked me up, though, for uh, with his team total over for a show split on Sunday. Um, that show, minus the 10 p- pennies, if you will, or cents. Um, uh, Vig marked the first losing show in four straight. Uh, so look, it's nice to get those live shows back on track too. Sport is finally coming around for me. And while these solo plays, certainly expect to see some regression because this has been a bit of a robust record here. The live videos have been picking up, so to counter that as well. Uh, much like other sports, baseball, ebbs and flows. Um, all you can really do though is ride the waves, stay disciplined throughout, um, and always keep like a tub of Vaseline uh, on you for safety when the going gets tough. Uh, by the way, Vaseline can also help you determine... If your significant other is cheating on you, um, at least that's what I use it for, you could pop open the Vaso at any moment. And if you notice a helmet dent in there that is not yours, uh, bam, you're currently being cheated on. That kind of data can also hold up in court too. Just take a picture of that helmet dent uh, or the helmet spike in that uh, Vaso jar and uh, go ahead and give it to your lawyer. They'll handle the rest from there. Um, As I often say, you get quality life advice on here. Uh, What do I want to talk about on this video? Oh, Run lines. Okay, now I know you might not be thinking, oh, you know what, thirsty, hold on. And yeah, water with lemon, folks. Okay, it's all about health. We promote health and wellness on this channel. Um, run lines. So uh, these, you guys may have noticed, I don't really give these out often, really ever. And if I do, it's usually a road team. Um, for me, you know, at least back in the day, I've called the last five, six years. I mean, the, and even going back way much further than that, but now that the market's getting more involved in sports betting. Uh, run lines are, can often be looked at as sucker bets, uh, if you want to use that quote. But at the end of the day, it's it's all about numbers, right, and value. And I think that the more and more that, that gets pounded into the market, um, there is potentially some value with betting run lines, whether you bet home team, road teams. Now, the reason why I don't like to personally bet home team run lines is because you really often get eight at-bats. I mean, actually, you have to get eight at-bats, right, if that's going to win, unless you're going to, like, you know, hit a dinger in extra innings. Um, but what I often say is if you like run lines, like, why not split it down the middle? Like, you can... There are some sites that will let you bet minus one specifically instead of minus one and a half, but why not um, split it, right? Let's go bet money line and then bet um, minus one and a half because in essence, you're creating one, right? Because if, if the game, excuse me, the object again, if the game lands one, um, you know, you're going to push that bet, right? So ultimately that's, you could create that line uh, by, by doing that and you end up saving yourself some, some VIG as well. I mean, it will, some VIG in the sense that uh, you're not laying the extra run, no matter. So if they, you know, win by one run, at least you don't lose everything, right? Um, but again, the reason why I don't always do it is because, first of all, I hate I hate that home team eight at bat thing, if you will. So for me, I just undervalue it. I, I, I un- undervalue it in my own numbers. So it's not that I don't ever find a, a home team run line favorable. It's just that it needs to like be really favorable for me to want to jump in. And same thing with road teams, right? So. Um, again, you want to lay a run and a half, it, it, there's no issue with it, but you'll find me far often than not grabbing that extra run and a half versus laying it. Um, it it's just where I often find more value. But again, look, to each his own, I want to be clear, you know, sucker bets are only sucker bets if the, you know, if the market thinks otherwise. If the market starts really not liking a specific type of bet, that'll usually influence numbers, and thus sucker bets become favorable bets. Favorable bets become sucker bets. You'll find this industry going in different directions, you know, uh, in groups of years. Uh, over time, but again, that's all, all, at the end of the day, I'm going on a tangent here, all about finding value, I haven't touched on run lines here on these videos, so there you have it, if you found that helpful, great, if not, eat my ass, okay, so, on to the play here, my favorite look in this game is over seven and a half runs, I know you might be thinking I go through this whole run line spiel, and then I'm just gonna lay the run and a half with the Dodgers, right, eh, wrong, um, I got this over at DraftKings in New Jersey, minus 118, look, I don't love overs by any means, and this is not the year for uh, folks who like overs. Uh, but this spot makes a lot of sense, specifically at this number. I actually have this more than a half run off uh, with some extra VIG, too. So you're actually good here up to 8 minus 110. Uh, there are quite a few perfect storms 
uh, here are going on at the same time for why I have this line off. And I want to be clear, it's not like a whale play or anything like LOL, but uh, certain factors uh, aren't being taken into account with this number sitting at 7.5. I'm going to start with the Dodgers and Walker Buehler. Um, I often start with pitching, um, but there's rel- more relevance for me starting here with the bats. Don't look now, but the Dodgers are getting healthier. I mean, Muncy took a small wound on the ankle, but everything came back negative. He appears all right. He even pinched it, I think, yesterday. Um, or today. Today's the 6th? No, yesterday. Um, not sure if if he'll play in this game, but you know, I'd say there's a chance. And, of course, Seager's out. But other than that, they're a full bill of health, the Los Angeles Dodgers. This is one of the scariest lineups in all of baseball, and, and certainly in the National League when healthy. No easy outs, no black holes. Four runs or more in eight of their last 10 games. So not like they're not hitting either. Uh, in walks Walker Bueller onto the bump. Now, Bueller's surface numbers are good, but his advanced stuff projects worse. He's really struggled with lefties, yielding a woe above 311. His K numbers are down for his career, but this is likely because his velocity is down. Nothing egregious, but still less heat on all of his pitches, of course, including the fastball. Uh, walks are good, uh, but you know his left on base of 86% just screams more runs are coming his way. Uh, will it come here in this start specifically? Who knows exactly, but... Um, I liked what I've seen from the Pirates recently, and I'll dig more into their bats in a bit. But the good thing you get with Buer, though, is innings. He hasn't been pulled prior to a game in the seventh inning um, once, and uh, he's just a quality start machine. I'm just going to go on record in saying that six innings, three earned from Bueller here would not be something I mind. Uh, let's move over to the Pirates and, and, and JT Brubaker. Did I say the Dodgers are near full health? How about the Pirates? Uh, while at full strength, these two teams are not equal by any means. Uh, Pirates have found some success with their sticks. Um, how about, you know, three runs or more in nine of their last 10 games? Um, I'm even willing to throw out the recent game against the Marlins. They sat a few guys Sunday afternoon. Weird things happen on Sunday afternoons in baseball. Also went one and nine with runners in scoring position. So even opportunities were there as well. This is a team that got Hayes back. Moran, guys like Frazier, Reynolds are swinging at beach balls right now. Uh, this team no longer has a huge black hole in their lineup. No true easy outs. Dare I say this lineup could test Bueller a little bit here. JT Brewbreaker is another nice regression candidate. Uh, 3.74 ERA looks good, but some serious red flags popping up. Another guy, mid 80% left on base, average K guy, too many home runs uh, with very little soft contact. Coming off his best start of the year against the Rockies, who cannot buy a road win these days. So, I mean, what does that start really mean? When Brewbreaker faces good lineups, he inevitably struggles. Padres, Cards, and Braves were a disaster for him. They'll see a tough lineup here end-to-end from the Dodgers. I'd argue tougher. Much like Bueller, at least, Brubaker at least eats innings. Um, and he better, though, because his Pirates bullpen is a mess. Speaking of bullpens, we know the Dodgers have live arms, especially if they're trying to close out a game. But I would know, I would by no means label this a top-five pen, at least not right now. Um, and the Pirates counter this as one of the worst pens in baseball. So I think collectively late runs are in play here as well. Speaking on the weather, we're looking at 80 degrees, over 80% humidity, slight wind blowing out to center. It's juicy weather for an over. Uh, it's not on the far end of the scale, per se. Like, a, you know, 100 to 100 degrees wind blowing out would be much better. But either way, um, this weather is certainly much better for an over versus an under. Also, some slight chance of rain during the game. Um, so a uh, little delay would only help over chances with uh, starting pitching, getting shortened stints. All in all here, I think this number at 7.5 made sense two weeks ago. Uh, if this game was played back then, both teams were dealing with a myriad of injuries, uh, but have since healed up two pitchers who have regression on the way, going up against near fully healthy lineups for opposing squads, um, and both of those opposing squads coming in firing with the sticks, uh, and the weather's projected to only help the ball carry. Got this over a half run off uh, with an extra vig into eight, so over seven and a half, just a simple auto fire for me. So again, my look here is over seven and a half runs. Got that minus 118 at DraftKings in New Jersey. May the odds be ever in our favor. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. Create some fake accounts more. Thumbs up. If you did not enjoy, I hope you fall on a Lego piece. As always, drop comments below your thoughts on the play and let me know who you are betting for tomorrow's slate. As always, folks, warm water. Uh, I also always get back in the comment section, so don't be shy. And I appreciate every one of you who comment and that should show by me always trying to get back to you guys. Um, content filled up on the channel all week. Uh, whoa, say it. Don't spray it, bro. Um, content filled up in the channel all week with NBA with Spread, Tyler, and the DFS crew. MLB with Joey holding it down in bases the next few days. Be sure to check us out at rumpurebets.com. See what we're all about. And thank you again for watching. Be sure to gamble responsibly. Stay safe, folks.